Good evening. Here we are once again uh, at Discover Design from JS Institute of Design. Hello, everybody. I hope you have had a really good week. Uh, today, being the 18th March, a Thursday, we are back with you for a webinar by Discover Design. Uh, very quickly, Discover Design is a series of webinar to help us understand uh, and explain to you as well what design is all about. Specifically, at this stage, we are covering a lot of topics in, this, in, the, in the design of interior space. And so far, we have brought to you around 24 sessions covering all aspects of interior design. Today, we bring to you again a very interesting topic on kitchen design, uh, building efficiency in kitchen design with Ridvika Chawla. Hello, Ridvika. Welcome to the Discover Design webinar. Hi, thanks a lot. Very quickly, let me just give an introduction. Um, okay, my name is Nen Xiao. I am the uh, head of the academics at JS Institute of Design. Uh, of course, I help with developing the, uh, the academics at the Institute. But my other uh, task is also to help bring an understanding of design to all people around me, to the uh, people who have aspirations and to people who really have more questions. So today our topic is being delivered by Ritvika Chawla. She is the director of Hacker Kitchens India. A little more about Ritvika. She is the director for design and customer relations at Hacker Kitchens. She has a strong intuition for her client's needs and she is the creative brain behind design aesthetics, customer satisfaction, and a smooth end-to-end -end process to product delivery. Ridvika's keen eye for detail and focus on perfection ensures that Hacker's promise for superior quality is upheld. I have invited her here to speak on many aspects of kitchen design, including, uh, of course, she'll be talking technical aspects about how kitchen design has been planned. But beyond that, we will also go into discussion about designing with a cultural sensitivity because obviously uh, kitchens are designed around the kind of food we eat. And you know how much and what variety we have in India in terms of food. And hence, I'm sure kitchen design has to be taking that into consideration. Uh, we will also be talking about this, uh, designing with a responsible and uh, sustainable um, uh, direction. And we would be looking at new technologies in kitchen design. So, uh, okay, before we, we hand over the stage to Ridvika, I'd like to remind all our participants, uh, if you have any more questions, if you have questions and answers, please put it in the question and answer box and we will take up all your questions at the end of the session with Ritvika. So Ritvika, welcome once again. Um, may I ask you to just give a little introduction to what question uh, kitchen design is all about. And I'm going to interrupt you now and then to put, for, to put forward some questions, which I'm sure the participants would be keen to know. Sure, that's great. Thank you so much. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, hi, I'm Ritvika. And uh, I uh, uh, work with Hacker Kitchens India and uh, we, uh, of course, sit at the Delhi showroom, which is, uh, you know, we are the uh, um, head franchisee for Hacker, uh, which is produced in Germany. Uh, so our topic for today is building efficiency in kitchen design, like I, uh, we've already, you know, discussed in detail a little bit about what I'm going to cover. Uh, we, um, let me take you through why, you know, efficiency and design kind of go hand in hand to begin with, and then we can go into the other details of specifically kitchen design uh, how, and how it works. Okay, let's, uh, let's move ahead, please. Okay, so I'm going to show you two pictures for a couple of questions and uh, just whatever pops up in your head, the first second is your answer to my question. So, okay, so two images now and where would you prefer to work? Uh, in, a, in a workplace like this or in a workplace like this? When I show you these two images, I just want you to have a perception of, you know, uh, what would your preference be? 
Okay, let's move ahead. Then um, what kind of a gym would you probably choose? Everyone has uh, an idea of um, um, perfect, healthy body type. So let's go to the next image. A place like this probably or a place like this, a gym like this. Uh, think about it. Okay, going, uh, moving on. Now a car. If you have to go for a long drive, what kind of a car would you prefer to take? Would you prefer to take an old car or would you prefer probably to take a nice swanky SUV? That's that. Right, can we move ahead please? Now coming to kitchens. Um, we all like to cook, not every day, probably once in a while. And for some people, you know, they passionately do cook. But if you, if you have to, you know, if you do cook once in a while, for example, where would, what kind of a kitchen would you like to, you know, prepare your favorite dishes in? Would it be something like this, which of course, I mean, this is just a representational image, but it is a, not a bad looking kitchen. It's, it's got good cabinets and it's got a nice vibe to it, but it's pretty much really cluttered. Or would you prefer to work in a kitchen like this, which is, you know, it's neat, it's tidy. And of course, it's, it has a good design. It looks very nice. So, you know, my idea about uh, design is not just about how fancy or how good um, a product looks. Let's, let's think about the car. I'm not saying that it has to be a very good looking car, but it has to give you good mileage for, it to, for you to take it on a long drive, right? Similarly, for a workplace. Where would you be more motivated to work? It will be where, you know, you can be more creative. It can be where, you know, you have space to think, move around. That second image of the office was a real image actually from the Make My Trip office, mm -hmm. which was, I think about two years back, it was a new office that they had done up and it, it, it seemed like a great idea, you know. Uh, why? Because it's not only a designer, it's giving you a little bit of an added advantage somewhere in terms of uh, how you can be in that uh, space. Similarly, if you talk about just kitchens, the kitchen might look really nice. It might have the best finish outside, but it not, may not be a very functional kitchen inside. So we are trying to marry the concept of something looking very nice. Of course, it's important. Why not? Kitchens nowadays are so open, hardly anyone is trying to have closed kitchen spaces anymore. You know, they like to have open uh, spaces, uh, which kind of integrate the dining area, the kitchen area, the living area. It's more like a place where the family interacts, you host people. So it, it has to look nice, there's no doubt about it. But at the same time, it has to be very efficient. So when you are hosting people, when you're sitting with your family, it's, it's less of a... Um, it's, it's less of a stress to how you would cook in that kitchen and more of, yes, I can handle it at that, even if you're cooking once in a while. So um, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, so my idea again, like I, I said before, is that your designer space can also be efficient and that is why it can be your happy place, whether it's a gym, it's a workplace, it's a car, it's a commodity, it's designer, it's good, it's good to work with, it's good to work in, is why it is good. It's not just because it looks nice. That's not why, you know, any space is good. So um, I would like to uh, focus a little bit about how uh, we can make our kitchens very efficient with them looking very nice. So let's move on to the next slide. I'll take up a couple of um, small points here uh, where we talk about, um, uh, efficient ways of planning a very good looking kitchen. So this is the kitchen work triangle. Uh, these images are actually from a real client of ours. It's someone's kitchen. And I just use these images because I wanted to make a point of how this ideology of a kitchen work triangle, which has been going on since years and years, has uh, whether it does really make sense, first of all, it's very important for us to understand because wherever you go and you talk about the kitchen design, they'll always tell you, oh, do you know about the work triangle? Well, yes and no. 
So it is important, but it is not the most important thing. There are other aspects that you need to take into consideration while working on your work triangle in the kitchen. So for example, if you have a look at the uh, image on the left hand side, which is uh, you know a plan, uh, if you see how the door is opening and the refrigerator is right behind the door, uh, a lot of people might question why, I mean, they won't be able to use the refrigerator and they'll have to shut the door each time when they use the refrigerator. So why? Well, uh, we have to understand that our clients have also certain restrictions when it comes to, um, you know, how much they can amend in the house, whether um, it's going into a little bit of technicality, whether it's a renovation site, it's a new site, whether they can make too many changes, are you a little too much uh, into the latest stage of the house making and it's not possible anymore to make much changes. Uh, so you have to consider all this when you uh, are working with your client and uh, even though even sometimes the client will come to you and tell you oh you know this work triangle is not working out for me because they read it up and they come to us but um, we have to understand it might work sometimes and it might not work sometimes so even though if you see in the right hand side image now we have a work triangle actually it's not it's not that bad we do have a work triangle but uh, at the same time we um, have it in a way that um the, the fridge refrigerator is actually a little not so easily accessible if I may so, say so but when I thought about it and I discussed it with the designer in my office who was making this um, uh, you know kitchen design she told me the client has nowhere else to put the fridge and we have had very nice elongated discussions with them so I said fine uh, you know let's keep it here and let's request them to change the hinge of the door or probably have a sliding door which they'll work on but again this perfect triangle here is coming because they had to amend the door. So little tweaks here or there, and you can get that perfect work triangle. Just make it easy to use. Even if it's not uh, in a, you know, in a real triangle, that's totally okay. But let's make it, uh, you know, just simple for the client to use, especially in a size of a kitchen like this, which is not very big. If you have a look, it's not a super big kitchen. So um, let's, you know, let's make it easy for the client to use. That's one right. thing. And so, yeah. Sorry. I just wanted to uh, actually just button a bit and talk a little bit about the kitchen ergonomics, which uh, in the some of our participants may be pretty, uh, they are still learning about uh, all these spaces and efficiency of these spaces. So if I may just put in one line about what a kitchen work triangle means, it's a, it's a pathway between the, the area where, where food is prepared, where, where the, food, the plates or the, the, the sink area where all the vessels are washed and the storage area. So we are talking about pathway, this particular triangle being very efficiently maneuvered when you are in the kitchen. And that is what we are talking about. So I hope you will remember this word kitchen work triangle. It's a very important theory about kitchen being very efficient. So thank you Ridvika for really pointing out some of through a live example of how you are making the kitchen more efficient through this work triangle. Yeah, please, please go ahead. <clears throat> Great. Uh, so moving on, uh, another very important aspect that I feel while we're designing the kitchen is what is the worktop height that you are taking? For a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, brands which are important like ours, uh, you might have two to three, four options of what countertop heights you can take. You really need to understand two things here. One is whether the kitchen is actually used by the owner. Because sometimes in a lot of areas, they, they do mention it's completely staff operated. They don't do much in the kitchen anyways. Or is it actually, uh, you know, used by only the staff or it's a mix? Because uh, unfortunately, the staff here um, in India is usually short. So you do need to make the worktop height work in such a way that it works for, uh, you know, the clients as well as the help. Because you're trying to make it easy for both the parties involved. But otherwise also, sometimes you get clients who are really tall also, you know. You do get people who are exceptionally tall at times. So we need to also understand what is a comfortable worktop height because I've heard, I've actually uh, 
you know heard client uh, clients come up to me and say that you know our shoulders start aching if mm-hmm. one day the maid is not there and i have to wash the utensils myself my shoulders literally start aching because the counter is too high for them mm. and they have to really you know bend over and use the counter and it's not a comfortable way to use the kitchen because you are really spending a lot of time in the kitchen Uh, and there's a lot of um, stuff that's happening in the kitchen, so it has to be comfortable height wise as well. So this is something uh, that we've worked on uh, about how we calculate the worktop height. Um, you know, you have to just bend your forearm at a ninety degree angle, like you see in the image here in the slide. And uh, whatever is your elbow height, you subtract fifteen uh, centimeters from that, and the height that you finally get. is your ideal optimal counter top height that is how you should work on it a couple of centimeters plus minus works but ideally it should be around that figure so that it's comfortable and if you feel like uh, it's just completely sometimes people have two kitchens also right they have a staff kitchen and they have a show kitchen uh, in a lot of cases and you know the show kitchen is going to be used only by the clients and the uh, you know the main kitchen or the staff kitchen is going to be used totally only by the staff so you can keep the staff kitchen counter height slightly lower so that it's comfortable for the staff to use in case they're short and you can have a regular counter height for the show kitchen so this i feel is a very important aspect that we tend to miss a lot of times where we say you know we have a standard counter top height it's okay one size fits all it's not true actually it has to be according to how the um, how tall the client is or the lady of the house is who's managing the kitchen yeah right. it, it, may i ask you a question over here ritvika yeah please um uh, while on the topic of counter tops i also know that uh, you know i uh, i mean me as a, a as a person who uses the kitchen and perhaps many of us we always want more and more space for the counter tops because uh, perhaps we are not very efficient in working in the kitchen because we are not really used to doing a lot better but uh, is there something that you want to talk about how can counter space really be made uh, very spacious for people who are working there or do you have something to say about that definitely i feel that see at the end of the day that's the size of your kitchen magic will not happen but we can smartly design your kitchen in such a way that whatever you were probably planning to hold on the counter top goes within the cabinetry and you know gives you that extra uh, breathing space on the counter so that you have uh, not just one but many areas to work on you know it's not like one um, side of the kitchen is totally dedicated to just small appliances because there's no place to keep the small appliances in a cabinet they're all on the counter all the time the toaster the mixi everything is on the counter no it doesn't work like that you have to have a dedicated space for that so that when you're not working with the appliance it just goes in its dedicated space and then you have at least that breathing space in the kitchen where you know if there are two people three people working in the kitchen which usually does happen a lot in our country where there's staff and there's you and sometimes your kids want to help or you know they're baking something in those right. cases let's have a dedicated you know space for everything uh, and in my next couple of slides i'm also going to talk about that right okay let's move on so that's the next slide actually uh where i'm talking about smart interior organization why i say and really 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 put uh, you know a lot of pressure on this fact is that again like you mentioned just mentioned that uh we always feel we don't have enough counter space i mean i i know of clients who will have the biggest of kitchens but they're like no 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 you know that little space is still not there i i don't think i i want a little more can you you know give me just a little more counter space so if we do use a lot of um you know these accessories these these kind of hardwares while we're designing the kitchen uh so that you can i mean i always personally go to my clients and tell them i am giving you this unit because you can keep all this in this unit you know like if you see the uh, in my slide if you see the rightmost image it is a pantry unit so mm. when we talk to our clients and we say um okay you do store one month worth of uh, you know grocery in your kitchen all the time she like there are people who tell us 
we always have one month's grocery in the kitchen, whatever said or done. So they need units like this, where they can store their bigger boxes, lots of greens, uh, packets like pasta, etc. things that can be comfortably stored in units like this. There are some people who tell us that we have so much cutlery that I don't know where to keep it. So don't give them one, don't give them two, give them four cutlery trays where they, you know, they can segregate, give them smaller cutlery trays, but give them more than three, give them four, give them five, where they can have their formal cutlery, their, you know, daily cutlery, they can have their uh, ladles, etc. in one, and they can organize perfectly. And uh, whenever you're giving all these, you know, um, th this kind of hardware, it has to be very perfectly spaced out in the kitchen. You can't give everything together in one area and say, just store everything. No, you know, if, if you have, you know, one area that's dedicated around the hob, then your um, probably your uh, daily cutlery and your serving spoons, etc. go next to the hob because that's from where they will serve from. But if they, uh, you know, um, want to store a lot of grocery, it goes in another section. It can't be sitting on the top of each other. And everyone hovering in the same area is not the right way to design, uh, you know, a kitchen space. We, um, you know, also suggest a lot of these uh, laundry um, accessories, whether laundry baskets and their wire uh, basket storages on the top and metal sheets in the units, so that if you are using anything for your laundry, uh, you have space for supplies, you have space for, uh, you know, clothes that need to be washed. Uh, so even smaller spaces that nowadays, especially because the apartment concept is like a, on a big boom, uh, people have, you know, people who are moving into apartments generally have a, a, you know, laundry area and a utility area, which is attached to the kitchen and it becomes like a part of the kitchen. It's like a flow. And uh, we usually design a lot of laundry and utility areas like all these add-on spaces we usually design and we uh, always give these extra units you know where a lot of open shelves where they want to keep their dishwashing and laundry washing supplies etc are very useful a uh, lot of um, people ask for uh, proper storage of plates you know they don't want to stack their plates because they don't have six or 12 plates they have 25 35 45 plates and they want to you know um, keep them stacked properly. They don't want to, uh, you know, have them visible all the time. So we also give them a lot of these dividers with a metal sheet underneath and you can, you know, these pins can be removed and put according to the size of your plates. It's, it's very, you know, customizable in that manner. Um, in fact, if you have a look at the leftmost image, uh, I was talking about the small appliances in the kitchen. Uh, yeah, so these small appliances very well go inside a roller shutter. This roller shutter always rests on the worktop. So it is actually, if you think about it, taking that much worktop space, uh, you know, it's not giving you, uh, you know, the liberty of more countertop space, but it's, it has everything hidden behind a shutter. So if, the, if, if your client really kind of insists that, you know, I need everything on the counter, all my small appliances have to be on the counter, there's no option of it going inside a drawer. So you can definitely give something like this to them. And uh, th these are common things. This is not something that is, uh, you know, a breakthrough in design, but we tend to miss these things because uh, we forget that, uh, you know, um, we forget to interact with the client as to how they store stuff in their kitchen. You know, everyone has a style and we need to understand uh, to make the kitchen efficient. We need to understand that what is the client's style and then you need to work around that. Correct. Would you call this modulation or modular structure? Uh, the interior organization pro, uh, particularly isn't modular. When the cabinetry is all individual, it's not uh, already screwed connected to each other and it cannot be dismantled. That's when it's not modular. But if you have individual cabinetry, which can be dismantled. So in our case, like our kitchens, uh, you know, you can, if you're moving and you want to completely redesign also, you can just take out all the cabinetries, place them in another order altogether, completely new order, and you can move the kitchen. So that is how the kitchen is modular. It has individual cabinets as modules, but this is just to make the um, every individual cabinet, uh, you know, specific for a certain um, kind of uh, uh, space, like laundry or grocery or uh, cutlery, crockery, etc. 
Correct. So, so would you say that uh, Indian kitchens or are pretty different from perhaps a kitchen where Indian kind of food is not prepared? And would a, would a kitchen where, you know, maybe five kinds of cuisines are being made would be very different from perhaps a more traditional kind where only certain traditional cuisine gets prepared. So do you come across such kind of uh, extra request for, uh, for considering all such uh, habits of the residents who want to get the kitchen done? Uh, well, uh, to begin with, of course, like uh, we are importing from Germany, Hacker is a German brand. They mm. are exporting to 62 plus countries. So to be able to make a product that is uh, suitable for all these countries is a very um, honestly daunting task to do. Absolutely. But they have worked, their R&D department has worked in such a way that they can uh, work around the uh, food and cooking sensibilities of uh, you know, all these countries. A uh, small example, uh, there never used to be a dish rack. Right. in uh, with hacker till about i think if i'm not wrong 10 years back 12 years back they introduced it just for us just for the um, probably i think other than us only two or three countries must be procuring the uh, dish rack because no one else uses it everyone is doing their dishes in the dishwasher no one's washing in utensils by hand but in our country that happens and then you have to drive them somewhere and then we need the dish rack, that's why. Yeah. Uh, other, un other units like the metal sink unit, it was never available with Hacker because uh, again, dishwashing happening in the dishwasher. Why do you need uh, you know, metal covering the sink unit? That's because in our country, there's so many plumbing issues also. And plus we're doing so much water work in the sink area that you know it tends to get damaged or spoiled. So they introduced the metal sink unit. Okay. Uh, well, that's how they do it. But other than that, even within India, if you see, there's so much diversity in the way that, you know, even uh, someone in the South and someone in the North and the West and the East, everyone will cook is so different. Uh, like if you talk about Delhi and Punjab, etc., we do a lot of oily cooking. We do a lot of frying, you know. Mm -hmm. So we have to be uh, equipped uh, when, when we say, okay, you buy a Hacker kitchen to last for 15 years. How? You know, if you're frying every day, if there's one, uh, you know, if there's frying happening every day, how do you do that? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, that's because uh, we give you the right kind of appliances with it. We give you a good suction power chimney to handle mm -hmm. that. We definitely know that if you have a staff kitchen separately, there's going to be a lot of heavy dishwashing happening there. So we give you big sinks, we give you a metal sink unit, we give you two dish racks to mm -hmm. cover that. So we Again, even within the country, we work according to the sensibility of the client. Secondly, right. when, when we say that, um, for example, in Punjab, everyone has big houses. And in Punjab, mostly people are doing two kitchens, like I just said, like the staff kitchen and the show kitchen or the main kitchen that's used by the owners. Uh, we also divide that in the sense that we give basic finishes, basic handles, basic cabinetry for the staff kitchen, give them a heavy duty chimney, a basic gas hob, not too many fancy appliances. Everything goes simple in the staff kitchen and everything fancy goes in the main kitchen or the show kitchen. So again, how they cook, how much they cook, whether, you know, some people just say we don't want any cabinets next to the chimney because we have so much oily cooking happening that I can't handle it. I can't clean it only. Okay, no issues. We work around that. We make sure your chimney's outlet is in such a way that, you know, there are not too many bends in the pipe. We probably put an extra exhaust at the end of the chimney duct so that there's more suction that's happening. Again, totally according to Mm -hmm. A lot of people, uh, I think in the uh, in the West, a lot of people have this, uh, uh, you know, water uh, matka that they keep for, uh, you know, storing water, cold, the water becomes cold in that uh, big matka. So they want a specific area just to put that matka. So we'll give you that. So we will give you what you require. But then, uh, like I said, you, you have to really spend your time and energy sitting with the client and understanding how they work in the kitchen. I think your first meeting should not be what you can sell to them. It should be about 
how they work in the kitchen and then according to that maybe the following meeting should be about you pitching the product because that's how it should work and i i would really like my experience of you know buying anything like that uh even if it is just not kitchens if it's furniture if it's you know even if you're selling furniture you have to ask them do you have dogs okay don't take a leather sofa take a fabric sofa so it's just a mm-hmm. home is very personal you know we have to mm-hmm. give that personal touch to the client to understand their needs and then take it forward from there right okay moving on um uh, well this is an image from uh, our range where we are able to give all uh, rl coding colors for some finishes of our kitchens to the clients the options are 190 colors are available if you see the backdrop of this image this is about the uh, 12 uh, you know type of finishes which we can provide in 190 colors mm-hmm. uh, other than that it is very important to show the client that your kitchen is efficient but how will it look good it will look good when you know um there is um, again a marrying of the front that you are providing in the kitchen the flooring the countertop color the um the tiling the paint the ceiling design so it is it is about a combination of all of that together for the kitchen to look nice now again you cannot just tell them that this front is very nice you should take this door color no it doesn't work like that you have to tell them that with this door color i prefer that you take a lighter countertop a darker tiling this kind of a flooring maybe you can do some wooden accents in the ceiling etc um in fact with heka we have a lot of um, real fronts which we call real because they're like real ceramic fronts real stone fronts glass fronts etc which are uh, very um, unique to the brand and they um you know give that extra um, when you you know like i said if it's a show kitchen you probably want to concentrate on how beautiful it looks because it won't be used of course that much but then it has to look super in that case i think again the uh, balance of having the right finish with the other aspects and the combination of other aspects of the kitchen like the flooring ceiling etc make the kitchen look very designer and then going to the second aspect of the efficiency comes after the possibilities that you give to the client about mm-hmm. how how and what you can provide to them so would you be able to share with us uh, what colors are very popular in a indian market uh, or would they differentiate uh, are these differentiated by the location in which these are located so that we know there are uh, there are regions in the north south east west which prefer certain kind of colors and similarly with material would there be any differences or more popular material versus some other traditional material so uh, when we talk about the fronts of course what's going behind the front is the material definitely right. uh, so if you if you talk about uh, you know these colors these are all probably uh, you know these are lacquers so we can also do real wood veneers when the client is a little budget specific and little conservative with the budget we say okay we have a similar looking laminate so mm-hmm. don't go for the veneer if you like it go for the laminate in a similar look so that the price goes down so there are a lot of aspects but uh, i feel um, like uh, our showroom in ahmedabad they send a lot of high end finishes so the clients there are doing a lot of high end kitchens where they want you know the real fronts which are actually our premium range where i talk uh, i was talking about the stone fronts and the ceramic fronts etc uh, i mean a place like ahmedabad is really selling that a lot uh, uh, down south where our kochi showroom sells a lot of glass mm-hmm. so people there la- they really love uh, glass fronts whether it's um, high gloss lacquered glass or it's satin look glass mm-hmm. but a lot of people like um, uh, you know glass fronts there uh, when i come to the north okay north is more uh, i think i feel they're a very um, staff operated uh, you know kind of them it's more you know if you if you think about it especially in delhi like a lot of people just say that you know it's the staff that's going to use the kitchen we won't use it so much i go into the kitchen once in a while i just go to cook for my baby i don't cook myself so maybe in the north i feel we do a little slightly basic 
um finishes we don't go to we we do accents of high end we do crockery units in high end finishes we do accents of high end they would want to you know highlight a certain area in the kitchen which is overlooking probably the dining area or if it's an open kitchen in that case but uh, i think here they go more for uh, a little uh, they feel it's even though it's not that all the finishes really last you the equal amount of time but they feel that a more basic finish like a laminate or a, just a lacquer will uh, probably be better for the staff to use and more sturdy that way mm -hmm. uh, whereas i feel that you know if vastu is involved then mm -hmm. there is a lot of uh, uh, there is a lot we can't do Uh, because vastu restricts you when you honestly when you come to design only for the good but then uh, you know we have to hold back like uh, black will never sell if vastu is involved mm -hmm. uh, and the clients are following a vastu consultant we usually are unable to um go for black or darker colors for that matter also a lot of lot of vastu consultants say no to dark colors like we have a very beautiful velvet blue color it won't sell if vastu is involved so yeah it also depends on that mm -hmm. and it also i feel depends on um how closed or open the spaces big or small the spaces so whenever we have smaller spaces to design or medium size kitchens to design which are closed specially we always tend to give very light and uh, very uh, if i may say so airy finishes which look make the kitchen look bright and not pull it down don't make it look small so it's very important to see what kind of space you're working on and again if the if the client is kind of already decided that they are going to um uh, work on very dark interiors like a lot of people do dark gray interiors a lot of people are doing that these days you know they're working on dark gray so then you cannot give them a kitchen which is already very dark Mm -hmm. so it's just too dark altogether so you know you have to work on what interior philosophy they are following and then on the basis of that you can suggest even in the high end finishes you do have a light a lot of lighter colors like uh, for example we have ceramic fronts we have light colors in that we have that brighten up the kitchen and one gives them options of that kind right so would you say that uh, the kitchen uh, people are very finicky about using trends in kitchen as well as they would do for their other parts of the house such as general rooms where i understand that colors in the homes uh, especially as uh, promoted by many paint companies it seems people follow trends pretty regularly in the rest of the homes uh, especially for walls or general painting would you say that kitchen also in the kitchens people are ready and now quite ready to follow trends of material color finishes and other uh, elements you know in uh, in this case i think our topic is uh, uh, it fits well it uh, they are following a lot of new trends people come with so much research it is actually amazing to see how much people are studying uh, before you know uh starting to build a home it's it's amazing it's a lot of hard work and a lot of heart that they put in to build a home and uh, when it comes to uh, the kitchen they are ready to uh, definitely experiment i don't doubt that but a lot of people because they are they're using a kitchen since so many years they have some uh, you know uh, they they work in a certain way and they want those certain things to be there in the kitchen correct so in that case you give them all that all the options of the um, you know novelties that you can give them definitely but you at the same time work on what they definitely want and that is where our design efficiency will come into place where okay. the client gets a new look a new feel a new front something that they haven't seen before something that they've uh, imagined to have but could not probably um put a finger on that this is what i want at the same time what they're sure of the aspects that they're sure of like the interior organization like having certain cabinets uh, definitely having certain appliances for example a coffee machine sometimes people tell us we don't give it in so many kitchens but yeah there are people who drink a lot of coffee it's you have to tell them that the you know a certain brand certain coffee machine can make so many types of coffee um, i mean it's amazing and people who are drinking 
five, six, seven cups of coffee every day. And especially now after the work from home culture, a lot of people are, of course, drinking coffee at home. So it is about, uh, you know, uh, balancing it, giving them the novelties, yet being able to um, uh, specifically also have what they want in the kitchen. That's what I feel. Sure. Uh, Are we saying something more? Some more? Yeah, just one slide to go. Okay. Yeah. So um, this is a little bit of an important um, uh, discussion that I wanted to have, uh, even though we are, I think, running a little late on time, but I'll take two to three minutes to just quickly discuss this. Uh, we do a lot of talking about sustainability and um, being environmentally conscious when we uh, talk about any kind of design. But a lot of times we forget that we can uh, be sustainable uh, in kitchen design also. It's very important to not forget that what you're pitching to the client, whatever a designer is pitching to a client, whatever kind of product, I'm not getting into the details of the product. It's very important that you have a background of what you're providing to the client, whether it is a sustainable product, whether it is uh, environmentally consciously sourced product, uh, generally, everyone is so aware, you know, if I talk about these three uh, points in my uh, presentation, um, we talk about, um, you know, our product being a uh, very low on formaldehyde. Now, this is not something that a lot of, like I said, people do their research and come, they will themselves ask you as to, uh, you know, how, how much formaldehyde is your uh, product emitting. So even if you are using some, uh, you know, sourcing some um, materials, it's good to have a little bit of a background check of the material you are sourcing so that you know what you're providing to the client, how, and there are people who are really, really, really health conscious and environmentally conscious. We need to keep that in mind always because that's uh, honestly something that, um, will be the topic of discussion, uh, you know, going further in, in the next, it already is to a great extent, but it will, it will just be more and more of this discussion uh, as to A, uh, how env environmentally conscious we are, how uh, the kind of wooden fronts are we sourcing, where are they sourced from, what kind of formaldehyde levels are there in uh, the wooden fronts that we are sourcing. So, um, the other thing is like in the South, um, say in um, Kochi, for example, it's really humid. So how long is your kitchen going to last? That is something that's very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, people spend so much money on uh, the kitchen. They need a good product, right? You cannot expect that uh, they'll be happy that the kitchen lasted them two, three years in the same shape like you're delivered it in. And then now it's all over the place and you can't do anything about it that makes the client unhappy and um, so for us if we would have been the clients our reaction would have been the same so especially in areas which are really humid like mumbai kochi etc uh, we need to be sure that the kind of materials that are, we are providing are tropicalized that's very important and that is not only for a kitchen it is also for the appliances that you're providing with it like for refrigerators it's very important that you know um, we have a uh, tropicalized uh, ready for the weather kind of materials and products that we are providing to the clients just to end it i mean uh, we'll not go into too much detail but let's let's work towards sustainability it is it is really important in the times that we are living in that we work towards uh, very uh, thoughtfully sourced products and very sustainable designs just not for our clients but also what for what we are doing to the environment today right so uh, radhika really uh, uh, quite an insight uh, at the same time we could understand some of the details but i have to I need to ask you two questions before we move on to the list of questions by our sure. participants. One is about the sustainability. You talked a lot about the material sourcing, etc. Uh, I was wondering whether you would have any advice on, uh, you know, the organization of water inlet and outlet, which means pro probably plumbing overall, the lighting, yeah. you know, the lighting of the space waste management because kitchen has waste management which is quite different and then the 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 appropriate air exhaust system uh, how is it planned for a healthier space and for a more sustainable kitchen so just a very quick 
uh, insight into what you people do so uh, see um, india is picking up with waste management to begin with uh, we are not everywhere will you see people segregating their waste mm -hmm. uh, I, i'm not proud about it but it does not happen in my own home to be honest mm -hmm. and it's picking up we are getting there i think uh, maybe a couple of years down the line we we will be in that position where we say that okay all homes are actually segregating their waste but with hacker you have so many options of waste segregation uh, in fact they um, they provide uh, we don't have any uh, law as of now but there's so many countries that they export to which have specific laws as to how the waste segregation has to happen so they do have waste separators waste organizers in such a way that you can segregate easily correct and uh, a lot of people uh, i feel are doing their uh, um, are doing composting at home which is great absolutely for uh, you know uh, managing our waste and um, um since we are now focusing again all this past year has been about being at home and being in the kitchen to a great extent i feel correct uh, you know i just feel that this composting at home is a great idea you don't need much you in fact uh, i was uh, seeing this ad of a very cool machine which wasn't very expensive you just put everything in that and it composts your waste it's great there's so many options available but for us as uh, as kitchen manufacturers i think what we are doing is we are pro, uh, you know providing them the clients good optimum waste segregation options all right and then you take it further from there you know that's okay. the first step which which we provide to them uh, secondly uh, when i talk about being environmentally conscious i also feel that you know just because my product is uh you know we are very sustainable doesn't mean whatever else you are using in the kitchen is also sustainable but again at the same time we want the kitchen to be fumeless and healthy because that's where the cooking happens and there's a certain kind of temperature i always say this you know there's a temperature running in the kitchen all day it's it's always going to be hot in the kitchen right so if if my product is fumeless and your the paint you are using has so much fumes that uh it becomes null and void for the effort that we have made in our product it does not make sense so we have to have a, a, an amalgamation of having the right paint for example if you're getting your doors polished in the kitchen or otherwise in the house also you know uh, uh try to use everything connected to be sustainable and uh, be a little chemical free or at least having less chemicals products like these and uh so many paint companies are coming up with these healthier options of paint they might be a little expensive but i think it's totally worth it in the long run to have to use products which have a certain sustainability aspect attached to them which are healthier uh, for the home not just particularly for the kitchen i always feel right so uh, thank you for that i have my last question on technology what is the kitchen of the future uh what kind of technologies you think would be immersed into a kitchen design to make uh, to make the kitchen a space of experience i mean i think a lot of millennials would love to work in a kitchen which is absolutely future ready i mean definitely then we'll have more millennials cooking all kinds of um, their experiments in a future kitchen so what definitely. is the future kitchen going to be like uh well i feel there is already a lot of work that's going on in making the uh, the kitchen space very future ready like we call mm -hmm. it uh so there are going to be different aspects i feel that are going to be involved in that one will be how uh, your ease of use of the kitchen something like uh, you know the cabinetry uh, shutting down with a push the automatic shutting of the cabinetry which is uh, electronically controlled uh, then Uh, there are a lot of aspects of these corner units working up and down through a remote control which is amazing it's again ease of use definitely mm -hmm. then we have this option of having our lights controlled with, via like a sensor or a remote and also the option of uh changing the temperature of the light to uh, warm to white and white to warm again via the sensor or remote which is again very future ready because uh if this kitchen is an open space you want the ambient lighting you want you know your kitchen to look nice as well that's there and um, a, a lot of i feel um you know uh speakers getting connected 
being fitted uh, behind the you know kitchen cabinetry there are the speakers being fitted in the plinth area the skirting again remote control completely automatic very good quality speakers uh, we uh, have that actually with um, uh, hacker has a type with blockund and they do have that uh, we are yet to import it to india but uh, in germany they do have that option again something that's really future ready and also i feel the last thing that i would like to say here is uh, appliances appliances with a combination of whatever i've already said will make the kitchens actually future ready and it's happening there's so many brands coming right. up with uh, you know automation in their appliances sitting anywhere in the world you can put on the coffee machine you can make any type of coffee you can switch on the <laughs> oven you can you know already feed it when you want it to be off on take a break in between everything's possible <laughs> i think i think we are to a large extent already very futuristic and future ready but um, yeah i don't know what else will come it's interesting but there's a lot already happening, already happening and we can encash on that yeah so i i would really uh, look forward to many of our young millennials trying out their hand in the kitchen too definitely so, rudrika thank you very much i thank really you. want to take you to a lot of questions by our sure. participants sure uh, i'm going to start asking them one by one so i have a question from chahat she wants to know what colors are used for vastu purposes in the kitchen uh see vastu always prefers lighter colors that's the basic mm -hmm. and uh, there are two basic things uh, when we come to vastu and kitchen design combined one is no water and fire on the same wall same counter and no black mm -hmm. they really really like red because they think it's the color of fire i think that's the reason but red really works well with vastu uh, red brown especially in counter tops a lot of vastu consultants prefer that but no black no dark colors and uh, no fire and water on the same counter yeah so chahat i'm sure when you start designing based on vastu you already have few answers with you uh -huh. uh, satakshi is asking how are indian kitchens different from other kitchens and are there specific materials being used in indian kitchens today uh well uh, indian uh, kitchens produced in india use materials that of course are available in india and they are a little different from the materials that are available outside of india like for example europe uh europe doesn't understand ply they don't know ply but they have mdf which is probably much 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 higher in quality than the indian hdf you know so uh, mm -hmm. it really is it's very different a um, lot of indian manufacturers are manufacturing in ply a lot of clients prefer that as well i won't say that they don't buy it but uh, uh, ply has a lot 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 of formaldehyde uh, for um, i mean it, it's great levels of formaldehyde but then of course it's a material that's uh, available in india used for a lot of things in indian homes it's not like uh it's not used so commonly and uh, whereas uh, there are a lot of uh, not for kitchens probably but for a lot of furniture where indian mdf hdf is used uh so the material science is completely different when it comes to india and the other countries i can specifically talk about europe because my product is uh, german mm -hmm. but there is a lot of sensibility difference and availability difference when it comes to the material of the kitchens that uh, are made in both the places right um i'm going to quickly go through many questions because there yeah, are so sure, sure. many questions about sure. kitchen design as well there's a question from namia which is asking that you know having a washing area like a washing machine in the kitchen is it uh, does it work very well in terms of the design of the space and the design along with the function which is not actually a kitchen function so how does it work well uh sorry i didn't get the first part of the question can you repeat it which is about the washing machine a laundering washing the, machine okay a washing machine in the kitchen space right so like i said you know a lot of people are uh, especially uh, in delhi and ncr are moving to the apartment concept see there you don't have much of option anyways mm -hmm. so uh, uh, and and also people moving into floors so people who don't have the liberty of having uh, you know a backyard or a big balcony or a separate utility or um uh it's a matter of space 
you need at least a dedicated counter next to the washing machine, even if it's inside the kitchen or outside the kitchen, to at least keep your clothes, iron them if required, and, you know, a, a hanging rod out there to, you know, hang your shirts, etc., or clothes that need to be hung. So um, it's totally doable and it's practical. There's no issue functionality-wise of having the washing machine in the kitchen. Uh, but then the kitchen needs to be a little spacious because yeah. laundry means another... You, you need a dedicated area for that. You can't just, you know, just place it. And generally, we also do a lot of um, washing machines placing next to the dishwasher. So that that area is totally separate. It's like a wet area. It's separate. Right. Correct. Uh, well, I hope uh, I hope we all get large spaces enough for us to have a separate <laughs> wet area. Yes, we do. Which is a dream being <laughs> yes. in, you know, especially in metros. Okay, so a very an, another very important question is how is the heat from appliances managed in the kitchen? Yeah, so uh, when we talk about modular kitchens and built-in appliances, which are which again, mostly people are now procuring built-in appliances for modular kitchens. Uh, for um, appliances like the microwave oven, etc., uh, our cabinetries are good suited for uh, ventilation from the back. Usually freestanding appliances like a freestanding microwave has the ventilation from the top of the appliance. Whereas a built-in appliance, a built-in microwave, built-in oven has uh, their ventilation happening from the back. And we have that uh, space uh, at the back of our cabinetry and the top back of the cabinetry from where the hot air is released. Uh, whereas uh, for, um, uh, you know, a, 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 a hob, Let's have a big chimney. Let's have the entire hob covered by the chimney. Don't take a smaller chimney and a bigger hob. That's a disaster. Give space between the chimney and the cabinets right next to the chimney. The left and right of the chimney should have at least two inches of gap uh, or a little more if uh, they are doing too heavy duty cooking there. So that's very important. Uh, but built-in appliances are always very suitable for modular kitchens. So. Uh, Air ventilation and the uh, our ventilation, the way we can provide ventilation, the cabinets, it gets, uh, it marries. It's fine. Right. Uh, I hope, Satakshi, your, your questions are answered. That was a very intelligent question. And I'm sure for you, the design of managing heat, uh, fumes, and all this really is important. And I hope it helps you. There's a question from Kushbu. Um, asking what is the most important part of the kitchen uh, for you as a designer? Uh, well, I think um, uh, as a designer, I feel, you know, when you uh, functionality wise, what is important is that you have a dedicated workspace for everything. Uh, like if you have a cooking area, you you smartly design, even if it's a small kitchen, you smartly design in a way that the client gets enough space between the sink and the hob and the, you know, refrigerator, or you're not giving like a tall unit right next to the sink where water is splashing on the sides of the tall unit. That's just bad design. You haven't thought about it enough. So I just feel one should, you know, have dedicated areas for everything. Even if it's smaller area, it's okay. But one has to have dedicated areas. And I also feel that, you know, when... Um, when you understand the client's requirements is when you can properly, uh, you know, uh, have every area uh, planned for them. So mm. one, again, I would emphasize on the fact that for some people, the hog might be very important. For some, they won't need a microwave. For some, they would. They need a very big fridge. They don't need a freezer. Some people just hardly use the freezer. So stuff like that, talk to the client and then drive with that as to what, what is important for the client is what is important for the design, I feel. Right, right. Um, well, there's another very interesting point by Ashish. He's reminded us that in the in earlier times, whether in the rural area or perhaps even in many other parts of India, women used to sit and cook. I mm -hmm. mean, even otherwise, a lot of cooking is done while being seated and the kitchens were designed around that. Now, mm -hmm. since people in the cities have got pretty used to the, the, the standing and cooking with on the countertops or on the platforms, as you call them, does it mean, is it because it's more hygienic? Is it because we are trying to accommodate our modern lifestyle within that? Uh, how would you design modular kitchens around the concept of sitting and cooking? 
Exactly. So I haven't really uh, till now designed any kitchen which requires sitting and cooking, but we have designed kitchens which require sitting and washing of utensils, because that is also one thing that used to be done and in some areas actually is still done. Uh, you know, sitting and washing of utensils still done in a lot of um, you know right. tier two, tier three cities. Uh, we've planned that. We've planned. We've given you know um, uh, what we can probably do is keep the kitchen as it is. But like uh, for for washing also, if you, it has to be done on the floor, we give like a dedicated area where we give them um, a skirting mm -hmm. uh, in stone, which is running, and then we give them a tap and a uh, you know drain outlet and all that. Mm -hmm. So uh, similarly for cooking, if cooking really has to happen on the uh, on the floor, give them a nice flooring, give them proper counter space, have a dedicated area where you can probably have a big exhaust on the top or, you know, um, a chimney, if that works, I don't think that will work, to be honest, but let's give them a big exhaust and give them a dedicated skirting so that whatever is happening on the floor is happening within that area. Now, um, not done that, but uh, seems interesting, but I think we have moved on from that concept of cooking on the floor. I really, uh, no one even from smaller cities have ever got that request that, uh, you know, because again, even in smaller places, if you understand, it's the woman of the house who's cooking more than the staff in these cases. But washing is still done by a lot of staff, even in smaller places. So they like to have the washing probably on the floor, but uh, cooking, I've never got that request, to be honest. Right. Yeah. So if I may suggest, this is really a cheeky remark, but if you're, if hacker is interested to study the Indian habits or maybe other countries as well, right. uh, please let us know because I think as academics, we should really be look, researching on how people prefer to cook, especially with yes, the kind of food we have, the kind of food we eat. And if that helps you to design a different kitchen, that would be lovely, but you definitely need some research or study to figure out what, what, does, what, do, what do women want? I mean, especially the people who cook, Forget Definitely. about how, how, who else, who cooks over there. So in fact, uh, sorry to cut you in between, but uh, when they had started in India, we had to literally sell them a packet of haldi to Germany <laughs> for them to, you know, <laughs> test the turmeric on their fronts because they were like, nothing leaves stains on our fronts, but we yeah. were like, no, haldi can leave stains on the front. So you please take this packet with you and test it. And they really did it. I mean, makes they, so much sense. It does. They did it. Haldi marks don't go, no matter and, what. But our friends, all haldi marks will go because it's all tested. Okay, that's wonderful. That's yeah. wonderful. I still have a question and sure. we'll pick it up very quickly. There's yeah. a question from Kunjal. How far should the hop and sink be placed? What is the ideal placement? Yeah. So uh, if you have space constraint, if you don't have space constraint, I'll never keep it on the same counter. I'll rather give them a small veggie bowl where it's a small, you know, single bowl sink where they can fill their water from. It can be connected to the RO and the sink can go in a separate section altogether, the main sink for utensil washing. But if you have, um, uh, you know, lack of space in the kitchen, uh, I feel at least three feet is what you will require for someone to stand and at least wash the utensils on the side of the hall. So try and, giving a min try and give a minimum, even if that means you will have to push the sink right next to the wall, that's okay. But give minimum of three feet space between the hob and the sink for someone to work conveniently. Right. So, uh, so all very important questions. One, this I cannot give up because you have to answer this, Ritvika. What about fire safety precautions? Uh, very important and uh, really what should be done about it and what do you guys do in the kitchen design? So uh, see uh, as far as the kitchen fronts are concerned uh, we have uh, you know enough number of norms in uh, Europe that uh, we fulfill uh, so we have fire safety norm covered in that but the rest is that you have to take good brand appliances, which also cover your fire safety norms. If that's not done, my kitchen won't be able to help. If you're, uh, you know, if, if, I mean, one should do honestly a little bit of research where, you know, the kind of chimney or the hob that you're providing uh, is um, following that norm because, um, you know, there was someone, I had a client, uh, she had a glass hob and she made an ulte taweka paratha on that and that whole glass became so hot that it cracked 
Sure. And it could have been very dangerous. No one was hurt, of course. But one has to know these things. You know, you cannot make a furnace on the hob because once she turned the tawa upside down, it became like a, you know, a, a furnace on the area where the uh, tawa was sitting. So stuff like this, one has to be careful about. Um, our products are fire safety proof, like they, they are covered for fire safety, but the kind of appliances that we are providing to the clients, I would suggest do a little bit of research and then provide. Don't just, just give it to them because it looks nice. Right. Thank you, Ridvika. I must say that there are many more questions, but since I found these to be very, very relevant, I have picked up those questions to ask you. For the rest, if there are anything left, I would request you to please help us answer for the participants who are looking for some more answers. Thank oh, you Rithina, very sure. much. Thank you. For all that insight. And I'm very sure our participants today are going to find uh, these tips useful when they look at kitchen design. And I'm I, glad. Thank you. And I want to remind all our participants that uh, please log on to our sites to find out more about the courses that we are offering, which are both face-to-face -face, as well as online courses and short-term. Some very important, uh, some very relevant courses are being offered. We have lighting design, visual merchandising, uh, climate control, uh, architecture design, et cetera. Plus we have, of course, the full-fledged one and a half year uh, in, uh, interior design program, which is being conducted face-to-face. -face. And we have a six months uh, online, purely online interior design program. For any more details, please contact us. And you may like to fill in this poll question before we leave. But thank you very much. Lovely to have you guys here. And we will see you again very soon on the alternate Thursday. So bye-bye. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.